The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. And the most neglected person in America is the black woman. This famous Malcolm X quote found new life via Beyonce's memorable sampling of the speech on her acclaimed 2016 album Lemonade. That album was largely an expression of the pain and triumph found in black womanhood, which we see evidence every day. Throughout history, the experiences of black women have often been overlooked and marginalized. From the dark days of slavery to the present, black women have faced an ongoing battle against disrespect and racial discrimination in various aspects of their lives. In this video, we will delve into the extensive and distressing experiences faced by black women in the workplace, healthcare, and other aspects of life. By examining historical context, research findings, and specific examples, we hope to shed light on the systemic issues perpetuating the mistreatment of black women. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative, workplace discrimination. The workplace has been a battleground where black women face multiple forms of discrimination. Despite strides in civil rights, they still encounter disparities in hiring, pay gaps, limited career advancement, and racial biases. A 2020 study by the National Women's Law Center found that black women in the United States experience significant wage gaps compared to their white male counterparts. On average, black women earn approximately 67 cents for every dollar earned by white men. This stark disparity persists across various industries, perpetuating economic inequality and hindering financial independence for black women. The Me Too campaign was created in 2007 by Tarana Burke a black woman following in the footsteps of Recy Taylor and Rosa Parks. She highlights how black women often face a double burden of racism and sexism, leading to unique challenges and discrimination that are often overlooked in broader discussion. Today, black women are more likely to encounter workplace environments infused with racial biases and microaggressions. These subtle acts of discrimination manifest as dismissive attitudes, stereotyping and exclusionary practices creating an unwelcoming atmosphere that hampers personal growth and stifles professional aspirations. Several studies have demonstrated implicit biases in hiring processes that disadvantage black women. Research by the National Bureau of Economic Research in 2014 found that job applicants with traditionally black sounding names receive fewer callbacks compared to their counterparts with white sounding names, highlighting the existence of racial discrimination in hiring. In recent years, a handful of Fortune 500 companies have been hit with lawsuits for breaking civil rights laws. Google, Target, Coca-Cola, Fox News, and more have all paid out millions of dollars in settlements over accusations of discrimination against employees. And companies including Amazon, Facebook, Morgan Stanley, and McDonald's have all been accused of racially discriminatory behavior. Black Americans remain severely underrepresented in higher-paying corporate jobs, as the Bureau of Labor Statistics found in a 2018 study. Similarly, white Americans outrank Hispanics in management, professional, and related occupations, the highest paying major occupational category. However, this problem isn't just limited to the United States. Black women aged 45 and above who work in the public sector are the most disadvantaged workers in the UK, according to survey published in 2021. The survey by Henley Business School, part of Reading University, found that almost 74% of women aged 45 and older from black and ethnic minority backgrounds do not feel as safe speaking up at work, in comparison to 39% for young ethnic minority males aged 18 to 44 years old. The survey also revealed black African and Caribbean employees are more than twice as likely to experience racial discrimination compared to any other ethnic group. Three quarters of black women aged 45 and above felt less respected by people they work with, compared to 63% for younger black men. For workers in the public sector, the situation only worsens. The statistics revealed public sector employees are more than twice as likely 58% to have reported discrimination in the workplace, compared to 25% their private sector counterparts. The report, called the equity effect, also found 72% of older black women are less likely to feel they can bring their true authentic self to the workplace. Throughout history and even today, Black women have faced many obstacles and biases that hold them back in their careers and contribute to inequality. Despite progress in civil rights, these issues persist, creating economic disparities and preventing true equality. 
These barriers combined with the emotional toll on black women and the lack of representation in leadership roles create an unwelcoming environment that limits their professional growth. Healthcare disparities. The healthcare system, meant to provide healing and care, is riddled with deep-seated racial disparities that disproportionately affect black women. Research consistently reveals that black women face higher rates of maternal mortality, pregnancy-related complications, and inadequate access to quality health care. A significant study published in the American Journal of Public Health in 2017 highlighted that black women in the United States are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes compared to white women. The study also found that late maternal deaths, those occurring between six weeks and one year postpartum, were 3.5 times more likely among black women than white women. Postpartum cardiomyopathy was the leading cause of late maternal death among all races, with black women having a six times higher risk than white women. The report attributed this alarming disparity to various factors, including implicit biases among healthcare providers, inadequate prenatal care, socioeconomic disparities, and the cumulative toll of racial stress. One striking example of the health care challenges faced by black women is the personal story of Serena Williams, the renowned tennis player. In 2017, Williams shared her near-fatal childbirth experience, shedding light on the urgent need for health care providers to listen and respond to the concerns and symptoms expressed by black women. For 11 years, Williams had known of her high-risk tendency to blood clots. In 2011, the tennis ace suffered from her first pulmonary embolism. It almost put her on her deathbed and forced her to be vigilant about making sure her health history doesn't repeat itself. She wrote in L that she had to rally for herself when the symptoms of a clot began to crop up during childbirth, even after the continuous dismissal of a health care provider. No one was really listening to what I was saying, she wrote. I told her, I need to have a CAT scan of my lungs bilaterally, and then I need to be on my heparin drip. Williams explained. She said, I think all this medicine is making you talk crazy. I said, no, I'm telling you what I need. I need the scan immediately, and I need it to be done with dye. I guess I said the name of the dye wrong, and she told me I just needed to rest. But I persisted. I'm telling you, this is what I need. Finally, the nurse called Williams' doctor, who agreed to have things checked out. Williams then chronicled how her doctors discovered she had developed various clots that needed to be treated over the course of several surgeries. Though things could have been far more catastrophic for the tennis player, the delay in her diagnosis meant she spent seven days in the hospital and had a painful recovery involving six weeks of bed rest. Her experience highlighted the consistent dismissal of black women's pain and the diminished credibility they face within healthcare settings. Looking at Serena Williams' story, one might say she had been lucky to speak up and stand her ground. Other black mothers have not been so lucky. Shalon Irving, a CDC epidemiologist who was at the top of her career would become a victim of the deep-rooted racial disparities and biases in the health system. In the weeks following the birth of her daughter Soleil in January 2017, Shalon Irving didn't feel right. She had had a complicated journey to pregnancy, with several years of fertility difficulties, a blood clotting disorder, and surgery to treat uterine fibroids. Her health history, coupled with the known risks of postpartum hypertension and peripartum heart failure among black mothers, indicated Irving might require close monitoring and follow-up care after giving birth. But when her screening for postpartum preeclampsia came back negative, Irving's doctor sent her home without treatment. Five days later, she visited her physician again, this time reporting an unwell feeling and dramatic swelling in her right leg. She had gained nine pounds in 10 days. She was given a prescription to treat hypertension and again she was sent home. That night, Irving collapsed in her home from cardiac arrest and was rushed to the hospital, where she was removed from life support a week later. An independent autopsy her mother ordered showed that Irving had died from complications of high blood pressure. The tragic story of Sharon Irving brings attention to the neglect and racism that black women face in health care. Her experience highlights the urgent need for change in how black women are treated. From dismissive attitudes to inadequate care, many black women's concerns are overlooked by health care providers. These systemic issues contribute to a health care environment that perpetuates health disparities and places black women at a severe disadvantage. Identity disparities. 
In addition to racial and gender discrimination, black women also contend with biases that intersect with their identities. For instance, studies have revealed that black women are more likely to experience workplace harassment in every aspect, which is often aggravated by racial and gender biases. The criminal justice system demonstrates pervasive disparities as well, as black women are more likely to be incarcerated and receive harsher sentences compared to their white counterparts. The case of Sintoya Brown, who was convicted of murder at the age of 16 and sentenced to life imprisonment in Tennessee, serves as a haunting example of the disproportionate treatment black women face within the criminal justice system. Brown would go on to serve 15 years in a state prison in Tennessee after killing Johnny Allen, a 43-year-old real estate agent from Nashville. In 2004, Allen picked up Brown, agreed to pay her dollar $150 for intercourse, and took her to his house. Brown would shoot and kill Allen while they were in bed. She would report to the police that she thought he was pulling out a gun and that she acted in self-defense. She also said she had been forced into prostitution by a man called Cutthroat. Though she was just 16 and a minor at the time of Allen's murder, Brown was tried as an adult. In court, prosecutors questioned her claim of self-defense, arguing instead that Brown killed Allen in order to rob him. In 2006, Brown was sentenced to life in prison after she was convicted of first-degree murder and aggravated robbery, which would have prevented her from parole eligibility until 2055. But during the course of her years in prison, the world saw some shifts, most notably the Me Too movement and a national push for criminal justice reform. Public perception of Brown shifted too, from a sex worker who was in control of all her choices to an underage girl who had been used by men who held more power. Brown's case began receiving attention from celebrities and advocates who argued that a life sentence was too harsh a punishment for someone who committed a crime as a minor and under the conditions Brown was then experiencing. Celebrities including Rihanna, Kim Kardashian, Ashley Judd, and Cara Delevingne campaigned in 2017 for her freedom. In August 2019, Brown Long was released from prison after then-Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam granted her clemency. Throughout this video, we have seen how black women face disrespect and racial discrimination in their lives. This mistreatment has severe consequences, impacting their health, well-being, and even their lives. Sadly, not enough is being done to address these issues and bring about meaningful change. In the workplace, black women experience pay gaps, limited opportunities for advancement, and biases that hold them back. Stories from women like Tarana Burke, Anita Hill, and Kimberly Crenshaw remind us that equality in the workplace is still a distant goal. In healthcare, black women face higher rates of maternal mortality compared to white women. The experiences of Serena Williams, Shalon Irving, and organizations like the Black Women's Health Imperative highlight the urgent need for change and better health care for black women. The cost of this disrespect is immeasurable. It robs black women of their potential, impacts their mental and physical health, and perpetuates cycles of inequality. It is disheartening that progress in addressing these issues has been slow. It is everyone's responsibility to challenge biases, promote inclusivity, and advocate for change. We need to create fairer workplaces, reform health care systems, and actively dismantle the barriers that hold black women back. By committing to real change and working towards a society that values and uplifts black women, we can make progress towards a more equitable future for all. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.